are traditional for the 4th of July, and as top-ranked boxing moves into Atlantic City on this Independence Day, we may be serving up fireworks of our own. Two streaking lightweights, Freddie Pendleton and Frankie Randall, face off in our main event. Pendleton knocked out former junior lightweight champ Roger Mayweather for one of three straight wins. And Randall surprised Sammy Fuentes with a thunderous right his last time out. Tonight, they meet for the USBA title. International, where we will be bringing you two and a half hours of top-ranked boxing. We hope you're having a nice July 4th, and we hope we can add to it with our boxing tonight. We will have the USBA Lightweight Championship, a couple of fine fighters, Frankie Randall and Freddie Pendleton, and we will be starting our middleweight tournament in the Eastern Division, Daryl Spain against Harry the Heat Wave Daniels. But first, as always, ringside report. And uh, Dick not only manages and trains. It is the night of knockouts here on Top Rank Boxing. Stay with us. We've still got our main event upcoming. Frankie Randall and Freddie Pendleton. That should be a good one. It's boating time again at Midnight Marine. And the National League, Houston losing to Randall. It's the USBA lightweight championship both Randall and Pendleton fighters who come in here really on a roll both are young men who seek the top in the lightweight division Frankie Randall a fighter who has done well in the past as both an amateur and a pro but now he's really getting recognition after more than 200 amateur wins and 25 more as a pro, Frankie Randall came of age in May against Sammy Fornes. In his first major test on national television, Randall showed why he's so highly regarded by boxing observers in the South. The Morristown, Tennessee resident pushed Fornes backwards over the first two rounds. Time and time again, Randall landed combinations while Sammy tried to counter off the ropes. But countering while going backwards is not Fornes' style. Late in the second round, this pattern produced some stunning results. Oh, right hand by Randall. It was a straight right by Frankie Randall that sent Fuentes down. Fuentes is wobbling. This fight may not continue. Vinny Renoni really thinking twice about this. I don't think it should go on. It doesn't. Fuentes cannot stand up, and Frankie Randall from Morristown, Tennessee, has come up here and done exactly what he told us he would do. He said, I'm going to knock this guy out early, and he did it. And that's the prophet, Frankie Randall. At least he was a prophet the last time he appeared on Top Rank Boxing. Over in the other corner, Freddie Pendleton, a man who, despite his unimposing record, has lots of talent, and he's showed it lately. Freddie Pendleton became more than just a talented journeyman on March 12th in Las Vegas. He's out. Gale backs him up. He was caught up in the ropes. I don't know if Roger Mayweather can make it. Wow, is he wobbly. Uh -uh. No way, it's an upset. This win over Mayweather showed that Freddie is better than his 16-13-1 record, and he proved the point when he took on Shelton LeBlanc. The 23-year-old Pendleton showed us his hand speed and ring skills in dealing with LeBlanc's southpaw style. It wasn't always a pleasing or graceful effort, but unlike his early days, Freddie knows what it takes to get the win, whether it's aesthetically pleasing or not. And tonight, he would like to repeat this victory scene and avenge a previous loss to Frankie Randall. Can Freddie Pendleton even the score with Frankie Randall? And can one of these young men move ahead in lightweight division? Well, to give us some insight into that, Dave Von Temple has a scouting report on these two fighters. Good matchup tonight as you look into the hand speed. 
And you've got, first of all, a little edge for Randall there, four to three on Freddie Pendleton. He's shown it in recent fights. The power, Randall with 22 knockouts, we give him a big edge there at five to three. Over to the movement, Pendleton gets on the board, four to three there. He has had very good ring generalship in recent bouts. The defense, how do you judge Randall? He's been knocking out so many guys, four three for him. And a very crucial standpoint, momentum, Pendleton five to four. He's been fighting often, training often, and he brings momentum into the fight. When you add it up, it's close. 20 to 18, Randall a slight favorite going in. Frankie Randall with a little bit of edge on that scorecard, and uh, that indicates to you what a close fight this is. Michael Buffer's in the center of the ring. Let's go to him now. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Resorts International Casino Hotel on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, let's get ready to rumble. This is the main event of the evening. With the approval of the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, this bout is sanctioned by the United States Boxing Association, represented at ringside by Alvin Goodman from Miami, Florida. All the officials assigned by the state of New Jersey remain the same. This bout is scheduled for 12 rounds, and it is for the vacant USBA lightweight title. The referee for this contest is Rudy Battle. Introducing first in the red corner. He's wearing the red trunks with white trim and weighs 134 and one half pounds. He's from Morristown, Tennessee. His professional record, an excellent one, 26 and one, 22 by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, Frankie the Surgeon Randall. And his opponent in the blue corner, weighing an even 134 pounds. He's wearing the blue trunks with gold trim He's originally from Philadelphia, but now fighting out of Miami Beach, Florida. He brings a professional record of 16, 13, and one, seven KOs. Over the last 18 months, he's one of the hottest fighters in the country, ladies and gentlemen, Freddie Pendleton. Rudy Battle with the instructions to these fighters. The pre-fight instructions. I just want to remind you, I expect a clean break at all times. Good luck to both of you. Shake hands. Both these fighters coming in with wins. Frankie Randall with that knockout over Sammy Fuentes. You saw that crunching right hand. And Freddie Pendleton with the decision win over crafty southpaw Shelton LeBlanc. We should mention this fight will be scored differently. It will be scored on a 10-point must system because it's a United States Boxing Association championship. Winner of the round will get 10 points, loser nine or less. All the other rules stay in effect that you saw with uh, New Jersey. Freddie Pendleton, he's becoming uh, predictable. Starts out with a right hand in the beginning of this fight. And this time it didn't land. Randall has seen those films. And of course, as we mentioned, they did face each other before. And uh, it was Frankie Randall who came out on top. That was back in March of 85, down in Bristol, Tennessee, one of our favorite stops on Top Rank Boxing. Uh, he won on a knockout in five. It actually was on a, stopped on a cut. So it was a TKO win for Frankie Randall. And by all accounts, it was a very close fight going into that round. A lot of observers had Pendleton ahead. He represented himself well. And when it stops on a cut like that, you figure it's inconclusive. So here they are again. Both fighters like to use the jab. And uh, they both are very quick with uh, both their hands and their feet. Randall is 24, Freddie Pendleton, 23. And boy, for a 23-year-old fighter, he's been around the block and then some. A 16-13-1 record was kind of resurrected by Ed Gersh and his people when they picked him up. He's been 4-1 since they picked him up. The only loss to Jimmy Paul here on ESPN. Paul, of course, the IBF champion. He rebounded after that fight. It looked like Pendleton got a little bit psyched out in that fight he had been fighting well and couldn't just get over the top and ever since then he has shown us so much more a much more schooled fighter as he goes along poised halfway through round one this one is scheduled for 12. Randall in the red Pendleton in the blue a couple of lightweights who can smell a top 10 ranking one would think a win here might get the winner of that kind of ranking Pendleton goes downstairs to the body well Randall with the uppercut and the left hook. You are looking at two fighters who are very well schooled. This and have lots of skills. 
Pendleton scoring with the left hook, too. He's had good distance and accuracy bringing that left hand across, both to the body and the head. Pendleton seems to have more purpose in his movement now. Other fights, he would back straight up. He would take his chance and then get out of there. He got caught with a lot when he backed straight up. Half a minute left to go in round one. Kind of a feeling out round, but they both landed some pretty good shots. Pendleton misses with that counter left hook. You'll see a great variety of punches from both these fighters. So round one is over, and we'll see if the feeling out process has ended as well when we come back for the second. Three years ago, Lucite painted my house, part of a nationwide test. Lucite house and trim against five other leading brands. This brand is already cracking. This one's even worse. And here's Lucite. Still looks great. Lucite's exclusive formula resists cracking and peeling much longer, so you don't need to paint as often. As soon as this test is over with, I'm painting the whole place with Lucite. Lucite. The paint that lasts and lasts. Why go to some fast food place that serves dried out chicken? When you can go to Kentucky Fried Chicken. They always have fresh, juicy chicken. And that secret blend of 11 herbs and spices makes it taste delicious. Then you're looking good. At Kentucky Fried Chicken, all we do is chicken, so we do it right. Anyone else's chicken may be left high and dry. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. Freddie Pendleton coming out for round two against Frankie Randall in this USBA lightweight championship fight, the United States Boxing Association title. That is not a world title. It is a stepping stone, I guess, to ranking or a world title. You can count on it most of the time that you will get into the rankings off, but there are some exceptions. Randall in the opening round was tentative. He started out much faster against Fawenny, and it seems like the reach of Pendleton has him a little bit wary of getting caught. The power of these two fighters, uh, you will see, big edge to Frankie Randall, but Freddie Pendleton in recent fights has shown the ability to hurt opponents. Deceiving statistic in that sense because Pendleton has knocked out three of his last five. So in the momentum category, he's more like a 60% fighter. Good left hook by Freddie Pendleton. Yeah, you introduced a new category into our scouting reports, momentum. Innovations. Well, I tell you, innovations never ending here on Top Rank Boxing. <laughs> Freddie Pendleton's found a home for that left hook here in the second round. In their first match, Frankie Randall said there wasn't that much about Pendleton that impressed him. He said he, he thought he was handling things pretty well. Pendleton felt pretty much the same way. What makes people believe this will be a pretty even tussle. Nice Randall gets his own left hook on cranked up. Here's the right. Now, the right hand is Frankie Randall, a big weapon. He saw it against Fuente. He was waiting back for that, and Pendleton answered. That was important. Randall just dropped his hands and tried to slip all those punches. He got nailed with the left hook. And does Pendleton have a good right hand? Just ask Roger Mayweather. He nailed him with a good right to knock him out, out in Las Vegas. Well, you can watch the way Pendleton plants before he throws that punch. His leverage is probably the most improved aspect of his whole game. That is a good point. He always used to punch moving backwards and never planted himself. And now, as you see with that left hook to the body, he gets leverage in his punch. It's a quick turn of the hips, the bending of the knees. He's been doing that. He did get caught with a left hook, though, coming in. Smile to Frankie Randall. See that? Randall's going to have to get that jab on track if he wants to get inside. And we'll see if he does that in the third round. So far, Freddie Pendleton showing you why he is such a tough man to fight. She was there. As he comes out to meet Frankie Randall. 
We are into the third round. I'm Al Bernstein along with Dave Bontempo. And if this goes past the third round, it'll be the first time tonight we've had that. Lots of knockouts here in top rank boxing. And if you joined us late, good right hand there by Randall with the countering left by Pemberton. Mickey Ward won on a knockout over Rafael Torero. Reggie Currington knocked out Leland Hardy. Daryl Spain in a wild slugfest in our middleweight tournament moved on by beating Harry Heatwave Daniels. And I am interested in looking at Dave on Tempo's scorecard. Got to give Pendleton the early edge based on his movement, the accuracy of his left hook primarily to the body. And that is his key. He's got to be moving. He presents a stationary target. That's what Randall wants. Yeah, by Pendleton. Randall, I mentioned that fine amateur career, won 220 fights as an amateur. Among the people he beat as an amateur was Vinny Pazienza, who's a fine pro lightweight. Oh, there's the right by Pendleton. Freddie Pendleton now moving Randall back, may have stunned him with that right hand. Randall dangerous off those ropes, however. Randall also beat Robin Blake as an amateur. And as a pro, he's beaten everyone except Edwin Rosario, the former champion who he lost to in 10. And right now, he's getting a little bit of a boxing lesson from Freddie Pendleton. Oh, now, that was an intriguing move. A swivel right hand. <laughs> it was worthy of Lonnie Smith, I think. Randall did walk into a big right hand by Pendleton. We'll have to establish respect for him. You know, Dave, you hit on it in the last round. The Randall jab is not there. He's getting out jabbed by Pendleton, and that, I think, is a big part of his problem. For some reason tonight, he has not been willing to work his way inside. Now he's trying it, covering up and coming in and banging to the body of Pendleton. We asked him during the way in this morning if because of the Fawenis fight did he get very right-hand conscious. He said no. But you see, tonight he has been waiting back for that punch and trying to send it home from a distance. Pendleton working the body well on the inside. We heard Larry Ken, his trainer, in the clean rounds uh, while you were away, urging him strongly, urging Freddie strongly to use that body attack on the inside. So swelling underneath the left eye of Frankie Randall. It's a red area there. Listen to that right hand underneath by Freddie Pendleton. Round three, another good one, I think, for Pendleton. We will follow Freddie Pendleton back to his corner and hear what Larry Kent has to say. You won three out of three. Now we Good change it. Right here. Let me drink out. You're doing great. You're boxing here with me. Keep it up. Now, his hands is coming up high, right? His hands come up high where you gotta go. To the bush. That's right. No uppercuts. A straight right cross to the body. Two okay. jabs and a right cross to the body. And inside, dig. The Pendleton reach. He sets it up with the left hand and hammers the right hand home and continues the assault. Just what Larry Kent was telling him to do, and he understand? Yes, did sir. It. Double jab, right cross, get down low. Down low. One thing you can do with Fred Pendleton is throw out that record. Yeah, he is certainly, I think it's a cliche, but he is the best 16, 13, and one rec, uh, fighter you're going to find around. And uh, you know what the battle plan is. You heard Larry Kent. He watched Pendleton use the double jab and the straight right hand. See if Freddie can execute it. Meanwhile, it's Randall, as you said, Dave, he wants to establish that jab. It's what makes everything work for him. He's got to establish the jab. He's got to bob and weave inside. Try to slow Pendleton down with a body attack. Frankie Randall, the 24-year-old from Morristown, Tennessee. Freddie Pendleton out of Philadelphia. Though he, he trains and works out of the Florida gym of uh, Ed Gersh. And right now, Freddie Pendleton is working well to both the body and the head. When Randall did try to get inside earlier, Pendleton really made him pay for it. Right hand, but a slapping right hand by Frankie Randall. Fighting, 
Pendleton moves and moves a lot during his fights, but stops and fights enough normally uh, to win lots of rounds. In the past, he wasn't moving smartly. He'd be moving straight back, and it was a defensive posture. Lately, there's been more movement, and he showed us another trick, jamming his way in and then tying Randall up a little bit to try to frustrate him. Good counter right by Randall. Frankie Randall getting a little anxious now, leaning in with the right hand. Frankie Randall in the red, Freddie Pendleton in the blue. It's scheduled to go 12 for the USBA lightweight title, the United States Boxing Association variety of a title. He took and Frankie Randall finds the range. Just missed being a howitzer. You know, you talk about you talk about hand speed. Freddie Pendleton is showing some very good hand speed. When Randall corners him, he's able to punch his way out of there. He's been anticipating very well when Randall comes in. Although this may be Randall's best round of the fight, whether he's winning it is another question, but he's done better in this round. There's the right hand by Frankie Randall. He nods, but he gets three straight punches from Freddie Pendleton for his trouble. I think Freddie Pendleton has definitely made Randall respect his punching power. Right Been one again. Very big improvement for Pendleton. He won the inside battle early. So this is turning into a very, very interesting fight. And we'll go into Frankie Randall's corner where they have probably think they need some work. Right has to be low. You got it now? You're gonna double jab. Follow the second jab down. It's gonna be way down in here. I'm gonna try to throw that right hand up high. He's not there. He's gonna get down every time. Okay. We're all right, we got one more round of pressure, and then we're going to change up a little. You can fight all night like this. Yeah, that's what we do. That's hand speed. Lots of combinations. Hand speed. And late in the round, the hand speed of Pendleton, the left coming behind the right, and Randall landed his left hook there. Well, you see the good technique of Pendleton getting his right up to partially block it. So you see, as we said, he's a well-schooled fighter. We're into round five. It's scheduled for 12. No panic, certainly, in Frankie Randall's corner, but they do want him to shoot that right hand a little lower. It looks like they should be a little more concerned. He did get it in there. You get the sense that Randall is going to step on the pace a little bit. Freddie Pendleton's defense is good. He's a hard man to hit. And uh, Frankie Randall has discovered that, I think, in this fight. If you didn't already know it from their bout in Bristol, Tennessee. I saw it there with Pendleton. Kind of a right jab as he was moving to his left. Just to score. right hand by Randall. Oh, that was just missed. And the left hand set it up. He got the proper distance off it. You get the feeling Randall's going to get one of those in before the night is over. What it does to Freddie Pendleton remains to be seen. And remember, Jimmy Paul, and I don't know if there's a better right-handed puncher in the lightweight division, uh, landed some right hands against Pendleton. He was able to withstand it. Although maybe after that uh, tough fight with Cubanito Perez, some of the current, some of the uh, uh, invincibility, if you will, of Jimmy Paul may have eroded. At the time he did fight Pendleton, as you mentioned, it was still a good shot. Still a good punching fighter, and he did nail Pendleton. Pendleton came back. The right lands by Randall after the jab, and now Frankie Randall finding the mark and having a very good fifth round. Pendleton is not running, though. He's right there. A minute left to go in the fifth round. We said this is a 12-rounder. 
Frankie Randall in the red trunks has picked up the pace here in the fifth. And there he lands a kind of a soft lead right hand, but no question Randall is getting in more punches here in the fifth. A couple of those blocked on the gloves of Randall. Half a minute left to go in the fifth. Frankie Randall is short with the right hand. It's been his problem in this fight, but there on the rope. Does some valuable work. So in round five, mark it down. Frankie Randall may have gotten himself back into this fight. We'll see. What do you think? Sensational. Norelco. We put quality first. The left hand shows the way, and the right hand finds the mark. That's what Randall has to do more to get into this fight. We're into round six. Frankie Randall in the red, Freddie Pendleton in the blue. In the last round, Frankie Randall had his best round of the fight. And he's hoping to continue it now. And uh, let's see how that reflects on Dave's scorecard. Makes an impact and gets him back in. I've got 49-47 for Pendleton, scoring an even round in the fourth. Okay. When Pendleton fought Randall last year in 1985, he was tired after about the third or fourth round, he said, partially because he just didn't feel he trained well. Early in his career, it was characteristic of Pendleton to not train very diligently, take fights on short notice. And as we said, in his last five fights under the Ed Gersh management team, he has been uh, in much better condition. And now it's interesting because he's been going to distance fights and Randall has not been. That's right, Frankie Randall in his last three outings uh, has not gone this far. The longest he went was a four-round KO over Keith Jackson. He beat Efren Nieves in a knockout in two in December of last year. Then May 30th beat Fuente in his only fight in 1986 in the second round. So Frankie lately has not gone this long, though he certainly has been 10 rounds before three times in his, in his career. Halfway through the sixth round. Randall's punches have acquired more zip. Even when he misses, he's right around the mark. And that one landed solidly. He didn't seem to do much to Pendleton. Freddie comes back with three punches just to show it didn't do much, but Randall is starting to land. Dave, I think the jab of Randall is getting here a little bit more often now, and that's why I think he's setting up those right hands. The jab, and Pendleton has slowed a little bit, set himself up as a target. Well, you mentioned it early, not quite as, he needs the movement. Freddie hasn't had as much movement, and there he takes a right hand, and that stunned him, I think. He's holding on. The Randall right finally lands, and it hurt Freddie Pendleton, I think. And he had the full body force behind the punch for the first time tonight. You could see it coming in the last couple of rounds. He was just missing and then grazing with it. And it's go ahead, time it was big. It's that jab that's setting it up. And if he's really going to hurt Pendleton, Randall will have to go to the body a little bit too. And apparently mix in some left hooks and he's done that. Pendleton with the right hand, but now I think Frankie Randall thinks he can walk through what Pendleton throws, and this is turning into quite, quite an entertaining fight. That'll do it for the sixth round. Another pretty good one for Frankie Randall. Don't hang around now. You're not setting up the hook right. He was a good right hand now. When you throw that combination with the hook in there, you got to forget about the first two. All we want to do is shake it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Come on from there. Okay. All right. I'll watch it. Okay. Here's the Frankie Randall highlight film. <laughs> that perfect body momentum into the punch. A tremendous major league shot. Pendleton did try to come back from it, and then he lands it again. I watch the left hand again, setting the way for that right hand. We saw it at the end of the... Fifth round and then there. We're heading into the seventh and for Frankie Randall, 
I would think renewed confidence. He's fought well in the last couple of rounds with Freddie Pendleton. Kind of a Cinderella story with that not very good record, but resurrected in the last five fights, and he's looked very good. Very likable young man, as is Frankie Randall. These are two of the really finest people you'd want to meet outside the ring. And they give you an honest day's work in there. They're really giving themselves every chance. They don't beat themselves. There's Pendleton going downstairs. He did that effective early, and now he's giving some movement to Randall. So oh, Pendleton no. has to recapture the outside, and Randall has to try to start taking Pendleton's legs away with the body shot. Randall concentrating more on that left hook now, even though it's missing. Randall getting himself back in the fight, trailing 58 to 57 now, uh, closing that gap up. And a point you just touched on, the jab of Randall had brought him back in the fight, but early in this round, he's been getting beat because the left hook has left himself open. And he returns to the jab. Must have hurt you, Dave. <laughs> on cue. This is round seven action. Frankie Randall continues to stalk oh, Freddie no. Pendleton. He's done that no, during most of this fight, but Freddie has certainly stopped and fought often enough, and enough for Dave Bontempo to still have Pendleton ahead one point on his scorecard. No, no. Reminds you, it's a 10-point must scoring system. Not normal here in New Jersey, but this is the United States Boxing Association Championship, so that is the scoring scenario. Oh, no. Low blow by Pendleton and Frankie Randall stunned by it and gets a, a war as a warning to Pendleton for the low blow. Referee Rudy Battle is the third man in the ring. A minute left to go in the seventh round. A round in which Pendleton is boxed well. Randall has been ineffective cutting off the ring. He's been following. Unable to cut Pendleton off. And has done a little bit better to the body though. A lot of low blows in there by Pendleton. He throws that left hook, it's going low quite often. And this one in this round was the first one. Big right by Freddie Pendleton, hurt Randall. He stunned it momentarily. They're rumbling. This is not advantageous for Randall. He's rumbling at a distance on the end of Pendleton's jab. Freddie Pendleton, who looked like he was in trouble in the fifth and sixth, has come back strong here in the seventh. Everybody's with you, baby. You got your second win now? Go get the money. Right now. Right now. You don't let up. Just like the phone. Rosario chased him out of the ring. Take a couple of deep breaths. Rosario chased him out of the ring. Well, you got to do it now, okay? You get down and dig into the body when you're inside and don't get hit with that sucker right hand, whatever you do. Keep your eyes closed. Don't get hit with that sucker right hand, whatever you do. Understand? Yes, sir. You get a drink? No. Give me a drink. Freddie, you're doing it now. Do it. Do now it you deserve a drink. It counts. Now Rosario. I want to see a Rosario special right now. Coming on strong here. Pendleton landing with the right hand. And he dug the body well. That slowed everything up for Randall. We're into round eight. Larry Kent is not bashful in that corner. Wants to tell Freddie Pendleton what he needs to do in the rest of this fight. His instructions have been pretty explicit tonight. They really have been. Frankie Randall, he goes back to the jab, hoping he can jab his way in and regroup a little bit. A lot of nice changing of strategies, points, oh. counterpoints, this fight tonight. This is a fascinating fight, just as we really thought it would be, barring some kind of surprising knockdown or a cut or some unfortunate circumstance. These are two very clever, talented fighters. Turn 
Again, the left hook strays low by Pendleton. I think he could be headed for a warning or even a perhaps a point deduction by Rudy Battle. He's trying to give it an upward motion to the ribs. I don't think and he's starting it from too low. I don't think it's intentional. I agree with you, but uh, nevertheless, if he keeps landing there, he'll get a point deduction. As Dave mentioned, this fight has had some ebbs and flows. Early, it was Pendleton in the first three rounds. And then Randall, as you see, with that right hand, came back in uh, the fifth and sixth, especially. And then in the seventh, it was Freddie Pendleton again reestablishing the boxing and counterpunching that had worked for him early. Every once in a while, we see Randall do well cutting off the ring. He's got to step to his right a little bit more to get that right hand home. A little tit for tat, Randall's punching low, and now they're protecting low below the belt as well as the buffet when they're on the inside. There is Randall hitting low. He just says, I'm going to take that into my own hand. Good uppercut by Randall. He's fighting well on the inside now. He fights well when he moves over to his right, and he can get the crossing pattern of the right hand. When he follows Pendleton around the ring, he does not get the punch home. We're in the eighth is scheduled for 12. USBA lightweight title on the line. Randall takes the right hand from Pendleton, glancing below. Pivotal round, I think, on the scorecards. It's been so close here in the eighth. Couple of clubbing right hands by Frankie Randall. You might want to mark this eighth round down on your scorecard. This could be a pivotal one. And don't go away because round nine coming up. Charlie, it's Mike. Doing business over the years. Here to Seattle? Hey, when? Charlie and Mike became good friends. Let's say we meet at the airport. Yet yeah, they've the airport. never met, except Charlie. over the phone. How am I going to recognize you? Uh, five foot eight, uh, about a hundred. The one business tool that will never go out of date. Five eight? I figured you for six three, six four. No, <laughs> I just talk big. Pacific Northwest Bell. <laughs> We've always been the future. <laughs> hey, Vern. Your Northwest Ford dealers are having a very special summer sale. It's a sale you can look right in the eye. Yes, Vern, each Ford dealer has his own special price on the back of these charming little tags. Nothing comes close to a Ford, Vern. Take it at face value. It's a deal you can face and a face you can love. Vern, I'm so excited about this sale that I'm beside myself. Know what I mean? Special financing as low as 5.9%. Hurry, offer ends July 5th. We're set to go, so is Freddie Pendleton. Here in round nine. In a lightweight battle between Freddie Pendleton in the blue and Frankie Randall in the red. Randall from Morristown, Tennessee. Came in here 26 and one. Pendleton from Philadelphia with a 16, 13 and one record. But if you've seen Freddie Pendleton fight before and you've watched this one, you know he's a much better fighter than that. You're looking at two fringe contenders right now trying to get into the top 10. And it's going to be a tight call either way. 77-76. I've got Pendleton ahead right now. Randall winning the last round. Very close fight. There's the right by Randall, but it doesn't move Freddie Pendleton. It looked good, but Freddie Pendleton was able to withstand it. No, no, no. Again, the right by Randall, again set up by the jab. And in this round, a little bit less movement from Freddie Pendleton. No movement at all from Pendleton there, and he gets nailed with the right. And that was the perfect example, Pendleton backing straight up, and Randall finally hitting home with it. Fatigue has to become a factor at some point. It's been a good pace in this fight. And it may be catching up with Freddie Pendleton right now. He's getting hit more often in this ninth round. In his last fight, he went 10 with Shelton LeBlanc and had no trouble going the distance. The last time Randall went 10 was against Edwin Rosario on a losing effort in June 16, 1985, last year. Randall is cut 
around the left eye. I believe it's underneath the eye by the bridge of the nose. Shouldn't be a big factor. Oh, they trade right hands, and Randall was hurt with Pendleton's right. They both got hit with big right hands, but it was Frankie Randall who was stunned. Wow, what an exchange. In a round in which Randall had been dominating, he was stunned by that right, but he's hanging on. Half a minute left to go in the ninth. Boy, those are thunderbolts from these two lightweights. Randall able to sustain his edge in this round by not going down and not really letting Pendleton follow up on the advantage. Boy, this is going to be a very, very good finish to this fight. That'll do it for the ninth. Hey, bud. Pick him out, please. Right. Hey, bud. Yeah. yeah, don't worry about it. Concentrate on what you're going to do now. Here you go, Dave. All we want is hand speed and combination. Hand speed and combination, okay? Now up on your toes, Lucy. I get mine in and you get yours in. There's Pendleton. It really rocks Randall. And Randall got his in also. Good short range punch. You know, when you look at future scouting reports, we're going to put another notch for Pendleton. Maybe from a three to a four. On hand speed? On yeah. the power. Yeah. On the power. I'll, I'll buy that. Eddie Eliano working on that cut over the left eye of Frankie Randall, and there are a few better in boxing. So he's got a good cut man working in there. And it really is uh, near the top of the eyes, on the eyelid. So it is in a little more dangerous spot. But I do think they've got it under control. Ransom right by Randall. Randall, who is boxing a little bit, Freddie Pendleton moving in toward him. A little respect and a little bit of adrenaline, and one might think that Randall got himself back in the fight. I've got it even, points-wise. Well, one would think that, and I agree with you. I think that he won that last round, and uh, this has got to be a, a very close fight in all the scorecards. There's some tape on the right glove of Freddie Pendleton that they really should rip off, and I'm sure as soon as Rudy Battle notices it, he will, because that could get into Frankie Randall's eye. Jab in the right hand by Randall. Pendleton now standing there. No movement. The right just misses by Randall. And Pendleton came across with the left at the same time, trying to time it. Freddie Pendleton walks away from Randall. His movement has not been as purposeful in this round as it was earlier. Randall not able to take advantage as much as he'd like, I don't think, Dave, of the fatigue of Freddie Pendleton. He hasn't been able to get inside because he paid too heavily. And on the same token, we haven't seen Pendleton come up the middle tonight, which really has been open for him. Because Randall, with the same pace, could be a little tired himself. He was hurt in the ninth round by that right hand. A little more holding and grabbing in these later rounds. And when we head to the 11th round, it will be the longest either of these fighters have ever gone. They've never been past the 10th. Half a minute left to go in the 10th round. Who did their road work, who trained hard in the gym, who got in the most sparring. Those will be vital questions as we head into these final two rounds. 
and they should be good ones. Don't go away. Fixing this water damage will cost $1,200. Freddie Pendleton races out to the center of the ring to meet Frankie Randall. Pendleton in the blue, Randall in the red. It's been a very good lightweight encounter. We're into the 11th round. It is for the USBA Lightweight Championship, scheduled for 10. I'm Al Bernstein along with Dave Von Temple. Hope you are enjoying this July 4th edition of Top Rank Boxing. Our main event certainly has been all we build it as. Excellent matchup and one that one of those on paper Super Bowls that actually comes through. I think this was a fight when you looked at it, you felt it would be good, but sometimes it isn't. And uh, in this case, we're happy it turned out that way. Before he came out, Larry Kent gave Freddie Pendleton quite a pep talk. He said, this is what champions are made of these last two rounds. Let's see. right hands Pendleton's got there with a little more authority I think more missing than anything so far in this round until Randall comes up the side there the uppercut by Frankie Randall and you know Randall has not thrown as many combinations as uh, we had seen from him in the past and as he is noted to do no he hasn't been able to get to the proper spot on the floor really to throw them Pendleton has denied that spot for him yeah. And he has not gone to the body because Pendleton made him pay inside. And round 11, like so many before it, a very close round so far. Randall starting to use the uppercut a little bit in this round. A minute left to go in the 11. Blood coming from the nose, I think of Frankie Randall, as well as a little cut over the left eye. Randall now using his jab well. Hey, Frankie Randall has landed lots of punches in this round. Body work again by Pendleton. So it swings back and forth. Half a minute left to go in the 11th. Pendleton with that exiting right hand, it's like he leaves a calling card. He's going to the left, the right hand follows, and he's out of position for a counter. It looks like we will head into the last round, number 12 of this USBA lightweight title match. That's Frankie Randall's corner. I'm going to keep the pressure. The important thing now is to stay with combinations and hand speed. Do not get careless, OK? Right. OK, last round, we touched gloves in the center. Smell that sponge, will you? This, this is, the, is the round. This is the last, and on last round. round, we touched gloves in the center. I want this tape fixed. Let's Let's get get I want this. This is Come the last round. Which tape now? This is the <laughs> OK, let's cut this off, too. Get your head Right Trying to do some repair work in the corner of Freddie Pendleton. That was Mary, our ring card girl, who made a cameo appearance. We're headed into the 12th and final round. That's Frankie Randall. A lot on the line for him. He came in here at 26 and 1. I think risked a lot to fight Freddie Pendleton, who was 16, 13 and 1. But they're both, as you said, Dave, fringe contenders in the lightweight division. And right now, they'll find out who isn't on the fringe anymore. This is the round. To me, it's even going in. You could make a real strong case for that. And uh, we don't know how the judges are looking at it, but it's got to be a close fight. And in fact, we'll see that even score reflected here. That is unofficial, of course, but Dave is seldom wrong, so 
<laughs> just a little off. We show it with confidence. Good right hand by Randall. They are trading right hands here in the 12th. So much comes together here. Fatigue, adrenaline, knowing it's close. And you know, so often I think it's the fighter who keeps his technique the best in that last round. Doesn't succumb to the all those things you talked about. Right you now, can overextend, miss your punches. And now Randall throwing those combinations that his corner men have urged him to do. This fight has really had everything. Pendleton denied Randall the inside, made him pay, so Randall bobbed and weaved. He got caught with a couple there. Well, you mentioned it's had a, a, an ever-changing strategy for, on both sides. And there is Randall with the combination, doing exactly what his corner men want him to do. You see the fatigue etched on the face of Randall. Now Pendleton has Frankie Randall backing up, and I think pretty tired. Randall hits on the break. Good left hook by Randall. That punch has been in mothballs for the last five or six rounds. Hitting Pendleton as he goes backwards. Boy, you pick. It's been a tough 12th round and tough 11 before it. Wright didn't do anything to Pendleton. Just under a half a minute left to go in this round. And I'll tell you, in my opinion, even though Frankie Randall looks tired, I don't know that he hasn't landed more punches here in this 12th round. I think he's been a little bit more accurate. Not a lot, but enough. Was this the round to decide this fight? It could have been. These two lightweights will go the distance. Well, tough and skillfully fought round. Freddie Pendleton, Frankie Randall. Which one of these young men will move into contention in the lightweight division? We'll be back in a moment to find out. Quality taste because this buds for you. We're back at Resorts International here in Atlantic City. And there is plenty of suspense and tension here. As you look at Frankie Randall, he thinks he won the fight. Ditto for Freddie Pendleton. That's Dave Metzger, his PR man, hugging him. Freddie has a smile on his face. and. Uh, Whatever the case, Dave, I think a couple things are clear, at least to me. One, that that man, Frankie Randall, is indeed a very good lightweight. And secondly, that Freddie Pendleton has proven himself to be a legitimate, perhaps contender in a lightweight division. We knew coming in that his total record could be thrown out. He's been fighting with so much more improvement, learning as he goes. He only had six amateur fights. And as he goes along... Probably one of the most improving fighters in the game. And we'll take a look at some of the action in that last round. Pendleton coming up here, lands the right uppercut. He could have done that a little bit more. There's the left hook he sent Randall back. A punch he landed very well early in the fight. Didn't get it in so much later. Michael Buffer is in the center of the ring. Let's find out who won. Ladies and gentlemen from Resorts International, here is the official scoring for this USBA lightweight championship bout. Phil Newman has it, 115-113 for Randall. Lynn Carter has it, 116-114 for Pendleton. And Rich Strange scores it, 114. 114, a draw by split decision. Okay. Who can argue? Who can argue? It is a draw. Frankie Randall, you look at him there, along with Freddie Pendleton. They have fought to a draw. They have fought well. And I don't know if you can argue too much about this one. Hey, I'd like to see a rematch. In any case, both these fighters will be with us to chat. And when we come back, we will hear what Frankie Randall and Freddie Pendleton have to say about this very tough 12-run USBA title fight. It ends in a draw. 
important medical news for sufferers of losing action. On ESPN's Friday Night Fights. Each week, ESPN is your ringside seat to see today's best young boxers exchange blows. Count on championship rounds of top-ranked boxing live on ESPN. Hamburger places may be good at making hamburgers, but when they try to make chicken... It doesn't always fly. Pretty happy. It certainly didn't make Freddie Pendleton happy. It was a great fight, Freddie. I guess by the look on your face, you feel like you, you would like to have gotten that decision. Should have should have been mine, but what can I say? You know. Well, it was a close was fight. A fight. Well, I, I show I show superiority by shaking him up three, four, maybe five times in the fight. You know, I think I should have gotten the edge, but you know how that goes with the decision. The decision is made. You can't change it. I'll fight it. Him, the world champion, anybody. I'm taking all comers. And the lightweight, junior welterweight, I even move up the welterweight if he's okay. right. All right, Dave. Freddie, you got off to that very fast start tonight, and then he seemed to come back. What happened during the middle rounds for you? Well, you know, it was like, you know, I slowed down a little bit, but I still felt I had the edge. As far as power and, you know, my defense, you know, once the shots were missing, I was doing a lot of slipping and, and sliding. I didn't think I got hit with as many punches, you know, as I hit him with. I think I, I should have edged him. At least, I, I don't know, I can't, I'm not a judge. <laughs> okay, did the did his right hand ever shake you up at all? Oh, no. He do good right hands, real good right hands, yeah. but, you know, right now, I don't think it's a lightweight in the world that can stop me, and I'm ready to take them all. I'm fighting all coming. What would you do differently in this fight if you had it to fight over again? Anything? <laughs> Knock him out. <laughs> Easier said than done, I guess. Okay. Don't worry about it, we'll do it. All right, Freddie Pendleton, he is moving on, and... For him, it was a, a tough pill to swallow, I guess, the draw, but the same for Frankie Randall. And when we come back, we'll be talking to the Morristown, Tennessee resident to find out what he has to say about this tough draw. The first name in snowmobiles is now the first name in all-terrain vehicles. The Polaris 250 Trail Boss. King of the hill for high-performance handling. Polaris no-shift variable transmission and McPherson struts outwork and outplay the competition. The Trail Boss rated number one for utility performance, best sport performance, and best overall performance. Polaris, the all-American, all-terrain vehicle. Test drive the Boss. Take a free test ride at Power Play next to Columbia Center. The Port of Abdicus. I know you're not running a short order restaurant. I mean, I don't plan on being late with the car. Positively, I absolutely had to have a lube job and oil change right away. I'm at this place called the Super Lube. This supposed to be real fast. No. Yeah, I'm sure they're reputable. They use, they use Pennzoil products. Yeah, I, I have Sir, I your been car's been ready. Too, so I don't know how long it's going to be. What? Your car's ready. Hey, hon, I won't be late after all. You ready for this? In and out and all done in about 10 minutes. Super Lube. A lot of good in a little time. No appointment necessary. Overall presents the finishing touch. In the fifth round, lightweight Freddie Pendleton puts the finishing touch on Roger Mayweather. He's out. And Steele backs him up. He was caught up in the ropes. I don't know if Roger Mayweather can make it. Wow, is he wobbly. Uh -oh. uh, no way, it's an upset. Overall gives you another great finishing touch. Only you. Just because you... Handle who just... Uh, had a draw with Freddie Pendleton, and Freddie, of course, thought he won the fight. I'm sure you do, too. Well, I think the fight was a good fight. Uh, Fred done a good job, and I done a good job. Mm -hmm. I pressed the attack, Fred ran. Uh, I think if it's a 12-round decision, uh, a 12-round fight, I think it should be a decision fight. I think I done a very great job. Uh, I'd like to say hello to everybody in Marstown. I put forth, I think, a great effort in the fight. It was a title fight, something I always wanted. Uh, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. I still think I should be ready, number one, to contender in the lightweight division. Uh, as all the lightweights out there see my effort, I'm not running, I'm coming. Okay, Dave? It looked like you could have thrown more to the body to slow him down. What problems did he present you in doing that? Well, he's presented a lot of problems. Running in there with his head, as you can see on my face, I got a little bruises and cuts, bumps. And you look back on the tape, you can see where the, butt, the cut did occur at. Uh, back in around the sixth or seventh round, I got cut with a head butt. Uh, I just think I've done a good job. You know, uh, he done a fair, uh, a real good job. Uh, we fought once in Bristol, Tennessee. I think he's improved very well. 
but uh, you know, Camacho's out there, Jimmy Powell's out there, uh, Livingstone Bramble's out there. I think I should be rated number one. I fought the number one contender ever in Rosario in London last year. I think I've done a real great job here tonight. It was a title fight. Uh, even though it's a draw, I'm still very pleased. I can still go back in the gym and work just as hard. Is he a frustrating type of a guy to fight? Uh, he's a, f a frustrating type of guy. All guys are frustrating, uh, even my, me, myself. So uh, you can't say that. Uh, I pressed the attack. The fight was difficult for him and also for me. Uh, I'm not worried about it. Did like, he hurt you at all in this fight? It looked like you were stunned one or two times. Well, uh, I would come in with a, my jab. He'd come over the top of it with a jab. And, and I was coming uh, in with my head down. He hit me with overhand right yeah. because my head was down. I did, looked a little shaky, but I wasn't hurt. Uh, I, I think I shook him up uh, back in the later part of the fourth round. Uh, with the overhand right, straight right hands. Uh, as you see, I, when I tried to go to the body, his head was in my chest and bumping around my head. I did get a few cuts and bruises, but that's all in the work. Okay, nothing tonight to discourage Frankie Randall, though? No, nothing at all. I think I've done a great job as a uh, title contender, and I still say that I'm a number one contender in the lightweight division. Well, you did fight extremely well, Frankie. Congratulations Thanks to you. And, of course, congratulations to Freddie Pendleton as well. This was an excellent fight for both men. It ended up a draw, but, yes, perhaps they both confirmed the fact that they can move into contention in the lightweight division. We'll be back. The champions presented by Old Spice after shave and cologne. And that was a great feeling. But, you know, it really didn't dawn on me that I was world champion until about four days later. My little, my kid then, my... My youngest daughter, she was about four years old then, and she got up in my lap and said, how you doing, champ? And I started to cry, and, you know, tears came in my eyes, you know. And I said, well, I am the champion of the world. All you... Polyester. Fixing this water damage will cost $1,200. Night of top-ranked boxing. Uh, of course, first of all, we saw Daryl Spain win over Harry Heatwave Daniels in our middleweight tournament. And then Currington over Hardy in a heavyweight battle. Mickey Ward beat Rafael Torero, TKO in the second round. And then in our main event, what turned out to be a very entertaining fight, a draw between Frankie Randall and Freddie Pendleton. I'm Al Bernstein along with Dave Bontempo as we wrap up tonight. And Dave, I thought, First of all, let's talk about our main event. And uh, I thought in that fight, both fighters fought about as well as they could fight, and it turned out to be just an even match. Everything that we expected came forth as Pendleton showed more foot speed, more hand speed, the power, and Randall cut him off at the pass, landing the right-hander that we had seen in the Fuentes fight very effectively. Pendleton cut off the inside for Randall. Pendleton wouldn't let Randall get at him, cutting off the ring. We had a lot of ebb and flow. Okay, two lightweights fought extremely well, as we said and it turns out to be a draw. And in our tournament, of course, Daryl Spain will move ahead in that middleweight tournament. Top Rank Boxing has been brought to you by Kentucky Fried Chicken. We do chicken right. By Old Spice Deodorant and Antiperspirant. Switch now to the long-lasting protection of Old Spice and stick solid or aerosol. And by Bud Light, the light beer with the first name and taste. Everything else is just a light. Next week, Top Rank Boxing switches to Las Vegas, where the number one middleweight contender, James Kinchin, takes a 35-10-2 record and a number one ranking in against Frank Minton, who replaces Ray Ray Gray. We'll see you next week in Las Vegas. For Dave Bontempo, this is Al Bernstein saying so long, everybody.